Hello everybody and welcome to what will hopefully be my final major update regarding the new organ. Now bearing in mind that the organ was supposed to be uh, premiered tomorrow on Beauty and Sound uh, on Advent Sunday, that isn't quite going to happen. However, a lot has progressed since that picture um, and I will bring you right up to date more or less picking up from where we left off in the previous video, with the help of Nala. <laughs> um, okay, so as you can see uh, here, this keyboard wasn't even my keyboard, no pedals. Basically, that's a shell of an organ, isn't it? So that was taken in early October. Now let's um, zoom forwards a little bit. So now we have some um, templates, some models of, our, of the key cheeks um, that we're going to use on our organ. These are based on the organ console of York Minster. Uh, down on the pedal board, you can see, well, you can see a lack of a pedal board basically, but you can see um, some toe sweeps. And uh, these are the toe sweeps here. They angle round. Now is pressing all sorts of buttons on the keyboard. That's very helpful, thank you very much. Uh, that's behind the curved um, toe sweep um, there you can see actually uh, the majority of organs like the Viscount next door and um, this has a very flat uh, piece of wood right here but the organ console at York is curved like that and that's essentially because um, on these um, toe sweeps here the, 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 the very far toe pistons just like the, um, the pedal notes, you know, top G and bottom C, um, they're quite far away. You know, on, on a flat pedal board, bottom C is miles away, as, as are the top notes, whether it's an F or a G. It's miles away, but on a concave pedal board, they're much easier to reach. Same with these um, toe um, pistons. If they were on a flat piece of wood, the, the furthest ones away are really quite far away. To get around that, um, consoles like this have them um, concaved inwards, so the, the farthest away buttons are actually at an angle, making them much more reachable. I suppose in theory the, the furthest away toe pistons um, are almost as far away as the ones in the middle because they're angled forwards. Quite a challenge to do that I gather from Renatus. That wasn't a, as easy as it looks. Um, complete now with the cupboard door. Uh, there's um, one on, on each side. Um, computer and the audio interface will go <laughs> will go um, on this side, and on the other side will be the music. As if by magic, the cupboard door suddenly opens. So the audio interface will actually sit uh, down here. That's that's our intention, and the computer. Um, it will be a laptop, and I'll talk more about the, um, the peripherals, the electronics, very shortly. The laptop will just sit in this space here. Um, now here, that is actually the, the little door handle. And it was, um, it was our idea to, to make the door handle as hidden as possible. Um, you, can just, you can just see it. And now it's actually a much darker colour. You can barely see that at all. You wouldn't know it was there. It's almost like a hidden cupboard, basically. Aha, now Martin, uh, the cabinet maker, is obviously uh, staining the wood there that is very, very closely modeled on the York Minster console. It's a really gorgeous, deep and rich um, color. Very, very happy with uh, the color indeed. If you go back, it's a huge difference from the original oak to the, the new stain. Gorgeous. Wonderful um, grains in the wood as well, don't you think? That could look, it looks like, this is horrendous to say, isn't it? But that looks like veneer. It almost looks too good to be true, which is what veneer is, it's too good to be true. But no, it's not it, that is, it's real genuine oak. It feels so nice to, to touch. Um, actually, whilst I'm here, this um, cabinet, not cabinet, but this whole 
um, is going to be removable. The, the, the rears of the, um, the stops, the, the solenoids, will be behind here, and it's actually a rather useful um, access point for anything that might happen in the future. Fingers crossed it won't. Curved um, pedal toe sweeps. Starting to look more like an organ now, isn't it? So you can see the, the hinges on the, um, on the cupboard door um, and the, 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 the general colour there. This is called a key bed. That um, central piece of wood there, I couldn't remember on the previous video what it was called. I think I called it a table at one point. <laughs> but it's called a key bed. It almost looks like our electrical tape, doesn't it? <laughs> In the middle. Now these are um, the key cheeks. These are going to go around the, um, the four manuals on either side. This is what they look like before they're actually cut out. Beautifully smooth and wonderfully rounded. Obviously done by um, a machine. Whenever I see that, for some reason I just, I, I see a mouse. I don't know why, that shape to me just looks like a mouse. <laughs> or, or is it an elephant? I don't know. So key cheeks being um, put together. That's rather wonderful, isn't it? So there are actually, I think, uh, four of those. Uh, what, one for each manual. And they are so, so smooth. You'll see them more later on in a more finished um, way. Renatus really don't do things by halves at all. The finish on this is second to none. It just feels so professional. Obviously, the keyboards will fit in here. I think this is the bottom uh, one. Coming together um, more now, isn't it? And for the first time, actually, you can see um, where the stops will go. Although there is actually a piece of wood which goes on top of these, um, a dark wood, black, actually, um, which sits behind the stops. Toe pistons, so we'll have um, a pedal advance, well actually a sequencer advance in that one, um, and then it's grate and pedal, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Number eight goes up here, which is true to the organ at York. Just above here, we'll have a grate to pedal, and then over here somewhere we'll have, it's either the 32 foot reed or the 32 foot flue. The, um, the other one, as it were, goes on this side. I forget which order they are now. I should, I should know that for when I'm playing it. Get those in the wrong order, and you'll know about it. So you can see actually that the curved t um, toe sweep here matches the, um, the, the, the physical pedal board there. All of these details which you know, you, you wouldn't even notice if you didn't know they were there. It's a really, really wonderful learning curve for me, this actually, being involved with um, this organ build. Understanding how an organ is put together and the, uh, the intricacies that go into the craftsmanship of building a console like this. To the untrained eye and to the, um, to the naive, it all just goes over your head. Certainly, it certainly went over my head, but now I'm, I, I'm, I'm much more um, appreciate the, what goes into um, building a consoles like this. The only problem is when I go and play, or when I have subsequently played other consoles in, out in the real world, I, I see things now that I didn't notice before. <laughs> so it's a blessing and a curse. Okay, so this is actually the music desk now being uh, put together. I think that's the only picture I've got of the music desk so far. 
Uh, it's worth pointing out that the music desk will be adjustable, um, both up and down and in and out. There are times when I'm playing the organ uh, here, um, late at night, or when I've been playing for maybe 10 and a half hours, 11 hours <laughs> uh, live, and I wish that the music desk was just a bit further forward. That's the top of the, um, the um, stop jams. There's actually going to be another layer of wood um, on, on the end, on the edges, going along there, and then all the way along the, the back. Um, so this will actually sit lower, this piece of wood here will sit lower than the, um, the sides and the rear of the instrument. Uh, Ron Artist just showing off their awesome craftsmanship, I think. <laughs> Aha, now this is where the stops uh, go into. This is what I meant earlier about um, this section here. So, that, so these sit on top of um, those holes just to give it that beautiful Harrison and Harrison effect. Um, in here is going to be the combination and uh, sequencer control. So we'll be able to control the uh, memory channels and the sequencer from there. This is now the pedal board uh, being put together um, by one of Martin's uh, colleagues at Renatus. <laughs> and you can see Martin there. Uh, Martin is the main um, builder of this organ. I'm very fortunate to have Martin. He's an excellent, excellent cabinet maker. Um, and he's also a very, very nice chap indeed. I've really enjoyed getting to know him a little bit through, uh, through my visits to Renata. So you can see the organ here starting to come together now. They've obviously been um, finished and polished. And this gives you a little bit of a clue as to what it will look like when it's finished. Gosh, look at this. Look at this key bed. Beautiful um, curves, uh, which do replicate York Minster. The key cheeks, which are now uh, have, been, have been painted and varnished. Uh, as I said earlier, so smooth. You can just see in the distance um, the, the long springs which Colin uh, spoke about in a previous video. That long spring effect really gives that really unique and um, high quality feel. It also gives a very consistent um, touch and a consistent pressure. Beyond that it all gets very scientific and um, beyond me. All I know is it feels amazing and these are the swell pedals these are the this is the brass uh, housing that goes around the actual pedal itself this is a um, merely a, a template there and if i show you the original picture of york you'll see the similarity if i just do that you can see which part that is the swell pedals on my organ will be weighted um, to give that feeling of the pedals being connected to a real swell box. Of course, they won't be at all. That's all electric. Um, but we are having a, a pneumatic um, device behind the swell pedals, which gives it the resistance and gives it the weight. Completely adjustable. It's a feature which first appeared on the organ um, of Westminster Abbey many, many decades ago and is still in use today on that organ. For the, for the same reason, the swell pedals um, wanted to be um, weighted, uh, just to give it that, you have to you know, push it a bit harder rather than just um, breathing on it and it flies open. So we're having the same sort of concept on this organ. They will be, um, they will be weighted. Um, and as I say, completely, completely adjustable. This is now the engraving of the stops. Uh, Colin is putting together a new font. It's called the McVeigh font. Um, so if you want an organ from Renatus, you can re probably request the McVeigh font. 
<laughs> um, that's a test stop head there. A great stop to choose as a test, I think. Taking Colin a very long time. This is not a, um, a font which comes off the shelf, as it were. So Colin has, actually, uh, has had to design this font from scratch, uh, getting, getting all of the spacings and all of the, um, just the quirks of the font to make it look just like the way I wanted, wanted it to look. He's been very thorough, I would say, um, and I, I can't express how grateful I am. What I'm able to show you now is um, the machine which engraves the stop heads. I put a video online of the, the actual stop head being uh, created on the, um, on the lathe, um, but I can now show you how the stop head is engraved using this um, machine which Renatus have just purchased. It uses a light. Um, I don't really know much more than that, unfortunately. Um, but you'll see it works like it works like a printer, um, and very very gradually just um, I suppose burns away the the, um, the plastic. Once Colin has got the font uh, on the computer just as he wants it to be, uh, the McVeigh font, he then he then feeds it into this uh, machine, which then does exactly as um, Colin specifies. Um, you can see there it's just cutting out the stop. This is just a test piece of plastic, basically. Um, and then after the machine has done that, uh, this, is, this, this is a manual labor part. Um, by using this piece of wax, cover the um, stop head in wax, so the, so the actual wax goes into the, um, into the groove of the font. He then gives it a, a little bit of a wipe. So you can actually see our stops just here. It takes a couple of goes to get these um, grooves completely um, consistent with the wax. And you can see there's a, um, a test um, stop head. These, um, as I've said, are a, a test pieces of um, plastic. If I just go back a little bit. Um, you can see here that these are the actual stops. These stops will go into the machine um, a few at a time, and the, um, the, the, this device here will then go across all of the stop heads, putting um, in exactly the same way as this plastic here, in, in, engraving uh, the stops with the relevant name. So it's all done in-house at Genotis by this very, very swanky um, piece of kit. What I'm able to do now is show you the most recent up-to-date videos that I've got. We are working day by day at the minute. These are five days old, so a lot has happened and a lot has progressed since these videos were taken by me. However, they will give you um, a real indication of the level of craftsmanship that's gone into this organ. And it actually looks like a real organ now. It almost looks finished. I hope you enjoy these, uh, these videos. Just to wrap up this update, um, thank you very much to everyone for your support in the organ marathon the other day. Um, your uh, generous contributions have enabled, uh, enabled me to uh, purchase some of the uh, peripherals which go alongside the organ. The organ, when it arrives uh, from Renatus, will be bare bones. There'll be electronics inside it with a, a USB cable hanging out the back, nothing else. 
So I'm having to connect it to my own computer and to my own speakers. So thanks to the marathon and thank you to your uh, contributions, I've been able to acquire um, some speakers, some new speakers to complement the existing speakers. I've actually gone for um, what is either called DefTech or Definitive Technology um, speakers. These are BP9040 speakers. Um, I've actually um, purchased four of those. And I've also uh, purchased um, a Motu 16A audio interface. It's called a 16A because it has 16 uh, analog outputs, which uh, for a, uh, a complex Hauptwerk setup, like the one uh, we'll have in here, is crucial. I think I'm, I'm worked it out at, um, I'm currently at, including the subwoofer, um, 13 speakers in the um, BIS music room. So all visitor and organists uh, and all people who come um, and be part of the future live audiences will be immersed in a really awesome sound. That's so important to me. So speakers, audio interface, uh, and uh, on the back of the organ marathon, I've also been able uh, to acquire a new laptop. I'm very grateful um, to a, uh, a member of the BIS community who works for a computer company over in America who reached out to me and offered me a laptop at a, um, um, a, a very generous discount. Uh, so I've been able to get a laptop with um, um, an Intel uh, Xeon W processor um, and 128 megabytes of RAM with um, ECC and um, SSD hard drives. Uh, without your support and, and without his help, um, that wouldn't have been an option. So I'm very grateful to you. You know who you are, thank you very much. And um, more widely, I am very grateful to everyone who supported me along that uh, journey of the organ marathon. And just finally, um, the uh, organ light is uh, not coming with the organ. Uh, I've actually reached out to a company um, not too far away from where I am um, to provide me with a, a, a light which sits uh, over the, um, the organ music desk. I was originally going to go for those, um, those brass Harrison & Harrison style uh, lamps which come over the um, uh, stops, but upon reflection and given the, given the fact that I do a lot of live streams and recordings, they don't give a lot of light and they will get in the way. So as nice as they are, we probably won't have those. We will have um, very clear LED uh, uh, lights on the top, which are um, dimmable. So the organ is, fingers crossed, arriving next Thursday. Uh, that, the date of that currently escapes me. It's the 2nd of December. That is the date we are working towards, the 2nd of December. We'll see. You know, in the future, once this video has gone live, we will know. Have we met that date? I don't know, but fingers crossed we will. Um, and then, of course, the organ will be featured uh, a lot on the channel after that, um, pretty much immediately going into the uh, 2021 Winter BIS Organ Festival, uh, followed by um, the inaugural recital given by, by our superstar guest organist. So, with that, I will wrap up this um, organ update. Um, as I say, hopefully this will be the last major one. If it isn't, then something's gone wrong. <laughs> um, and I really can't wait to share the organ uh, with you um, in real life. The next video, the next major video, will actually be the organ arriving and it being set up and um, taking you through that experience as it happens. So until then, um, I will say a thank you to everyone to your support. And of course, um, cheerio, take care, and as always, stay safe. Goodbye, everyone. Take care.